Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker, BonnieBayCrochet.com. Welcome to Friday Fun Live. And we've got a lot of fun things to talk about today. Um, just wanted to say hello to everybody. Let me, give me a second here to get my computer online with you all. Let me give it a refresh here. Ah, it's going to be a different kind of morning today. Let's go ahead and turn that off so you don't hear my commercial. Okay, there we are. I'm just waiting for the um, for the feed to get started here so I can try to respond. Okay, we've got some people in. Angela Cooper, hello. And hey, Kathleen. Um, hi to Deborah. And good to see you, Becky. Um, let's see, I need these. <laughs> um, let's see. And Janice says, your first time on. Well, welcome, Janice. I'm glad you could join me today. Um, and is it Petra's happy place? She says, am I late? No, right on time. I just need to give it a minute to get going. Um, just to let you know right off the bat, I'm going to have to leave momentarily when somebody rings the doorbell here. <laughs> um, there was something scheduled for two o'clock today, a service person coming to the house to help my mother-in-law. And as you would know it, um, he just called and said, oh, I can come at 12.15. And I'm thinking, no, come at two. But anyway, he's going to be here soon. So as I promise when that happens, I'm going to, to get my exercise in for the day. I'm going to run down the stairs as fast as I can, open that door because my mother-in-law has a bad leg and she's not able to do anything that involves walking right now, which is why I am in South Carolina. Um, so I just want to say, pardon me for having to do that at first. That was not our plan. It was somebody else's plan. So anyway, we are being made even more patient than, than we even thought we would be, you know, always an opportunity to grow and you know how that works. Okay. So let's get back. I wanted to say, Hey, to more of you all. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. we got some more here. We've got somebody called blind needle. That's an interesting name. Wow. Um, and know you're live. We are, we are doing this right now. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I have my daughter, Becky Bullbush in Noonan, Georgia. She's my administrator and we have some really great news. She finally was able to be in one place at one time, um, in between doing film shoots and, um, and traveling and helping to care for, um, her grandma here in South Carolina. Um, her Etsy store is up. She had um, I don't know if you remember last week or two weeks ago. It was two weeks ago. She showed the little earrings that look like little hanks of yarn. I don't have any to show you, unfortunately, here. Um, Becky, you need to send me some. <laughs> um, and the ones that she's made for me, I left in Maryland. But um, her store is up and running. So if you want to go ahead and check that, the link is in the video description. And I think she's going to put it in this group chat as well. Um, it's a small store. It just has the earrings, but they're beautiful. So if you're interested in that, there's, there it is. She just put up the link for you all. Um, they're a lot of fun to wear. They have, she has a lot of different colors. And I'll put a little plug in here. She used Good Loops yarn. Um, and if you're interested in crocheting with that yarn, it's in the, that um, my affiliate link. And as you know, affiliate links are, uh, it doesn't cost you any more, but I get a little bit of a benefit if you order through my link. Um, I'm supposed to say that, and I want to be upfront about that, but um, this is really fabulous yarn, even if I wasn't an affiliate with her, with um, Good Loops, and um, I need to go let the man in. I will be right back. Hold on. I'm back. So, so sorry about that, guys and ladies. Um, this was, as, as I said before, this wasn't my plan. 
the exterminator decide to come two hours early. So anyway, <laughs> and it's not a little house, so I had to run upstairs, downstairs, and thankfully not in my nightgown, as the old poem used to say for kids. Thankfully not in my nightgown, as the old poem used to say for kids. But um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to say, hey, I just told you about Becky's earring site, and I was talking about the Good Loop Sharn. Um, I just wanted to say that I've used that in some of my um, designs on this channel. Um, if you want to check out, I think it's the Granny Square Ripple Scarf. It's an easy beginner project. I use that yarn and oh my goodness, that stuff is so nice. It's 100% bamboo and it's from South Africa. Really, really nice quality stuff there. But anyway, so much for that. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody here. So we have Pamela from Sherwood, Arkansas. Excellent. Um, and Bunny Sue says she likes the pumpkin hat pattern. Thank you. I'm so glad that worked out for you all. I mean, it blesses me to know that my, you know, my patterns are legible or, you know, people can figure them out and um, accomplish some of these fun things. That really does bless a designer. Um, as, as you can imagine, it's not always the case. But, um, but anyway, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and dive in a little bit. Um, Becky can try to um, respond to you here. Oh, I do have to say hi to Anne from South Africa. Hi, Anne. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, Barbara from Temple, Texas. Wow, it's so it's so amazing to, to see how many people are able to join me. And, um, okay, Carla wants to know, what is this blanket that's on the screen? Well, let me go ahead and start with that since you've asked about that. Um this is actually a shawl or a stole, okay? And it's can, it can be worn just to keep your shoulders nice and warm. And it has fringe. And I love putting fringe on things when I can. Um, and if you don't need a stole and you just want a fun scarf, you can bunch it up and you can do whatever you want you know, scarf-wise, it can be a lot of fun um, for the winter time. The only problem with fringe, of course, is static electricity sometimes can be a problem. But um, but anyway, this is a, a project. It's, uh, I think it's called the Cozy Lacy Scarf. Wait a minute, it's Cozy Lacy Stole or Wrap or something like that. I haven't really given it an official name, but it'll be coming to my YouTube channel probably within the month, okay? Um, in case some of you are new to to, um, to Friday Fun Live, I, I mentioned last Friday, I'm actually broadcasting from, from Conway, South Carolina, outside of Myrtle Beach. And um, let me go ahead and get this off of my phone. There it goes. Um, and I'm, I'm just helping my mother-in-law out a little bit. She's having some, some health challenges um, and, you know, kind of things that we all knew was coming. And um, so... Our family is going to be, you know, kind of here and there and everywhere for a while. But it's actually been a really good time for me this week, um, being on call and um, been able to get my studio. I think I posted a picture of that, get a, a, a portable studio set up here. So I can actually, I'm getting more work done here now than I usually get at home. Because as you know, when you're working from home, you've got a lot more distractions, including, um, you know, housework and, and house maintenance and, um you know, feeding other people. I mean, I'm feeding people here, obviously, but um, it's just different. It's a little more laid back. My house isn't screaming at me saying, put the hook down and do this or put the computer down and do that. Um, so, you know, it's kind of nice to have a little home away from home and it's actually been been actually pretty restful and um, enjoying sitting with my mother-in-law and I'm all caught up on Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune <laughs> episodes. That's something that we've always enjoyed watching as a family. So that's pretty much how we're doing. Oh, I want to say I saw somebody from Japan. Um, is it Hikaru? Um, thank you for joining us. Um, um, how do we? Have, I, I know a little bit of Japanese, but my, my brain is just totally slipping on me right now. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, I know Ohio Gazayamas is good morning, but we're past the morning here. I think you're probably into the evening. Um, there, but um, so glad that you're joining us. And um, 
Is it Mariella from Guatemala? Thank you for joining us. Welcome. We've got some sweet dear friends in our church back in Maryland from Guatemala. Um, family friends for probably at least 20 years. So um, love, 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 love the people that I've met from there. Um, and let's see, Tony Deegan, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for your encouragement throughout the week on social media. Um, and let's see. Yeah, Rose says that um, hopefully early enough to make to make this as a gift. Yes, this this works up really fast, and I use the same yarn that I used for the the um, the oh, my brain. I'm sorry for the comfy cozy shrug that I posted this past week. Um, it's the premier parfait, and it only takes one. So one. One scan will do you on that uh, for this design. And let's see, I just wanna go ahead and make sure I'm not missing anybody. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for, for supporting my daughter there um, with the earring order, I appreciate that. Um, let's see, I, I've actually, she made some for me two years ago for Christmas out of some other yarn that she had on hand. and. I, I still have them and I wear them all the time. And you know, as long as you, I guess, don't get caught in a rainstorm or something with them, they you know, they last a long time. And even if they do, they're made out of washable yarn, so you should be good to go um, on those on those yarn earrings. Um, and hi to Irene. Um, she's telling me about the Aaron Hart Afghan. Oh, and you're expecting a second granddaughter. Congratulations. That that must be amazing. Um, and can I recommend a similar pattern for the next grandchild? Um, that really depends. Um, it, Irene, I don't know if you're looking to make an like a, a large regular Afghan or a baby Afghan. I do have um, an, an Easy Beginner Baby book that is available now on Amazon if you like any of those. But um, I do have more intricate ones even on my site. So if you look on my, my YouTube channel, and go to uh, crochet baby blankets. I believe there's another one. There's one called the Hialeah Honey Baby Blanket that's very highly textured. Um, it's an intermediate pattern. It's not It's not for wimps, I hate to say, but um, because it does use the Celtic weave stitch. But once you get past that, um, I think you'll really enjoy it. It goes really quickly and it uses um, DK weight yarn. So I hope I hope that's helpful. And um, <laughs> Barbara says she's doing two things at once. Ah, uh, yeah, don't we know what that's like? And and sad Tweedy, is if I'm saying that right, from Egypt. Wow, that that's amazing. Um, thank you for for you know for joining us. And uh, I'd love to go to Egypt someday. Um, still on my list, but um, we'll see. Uh, let me see what else I got on my, my agenda for the day. Um, oh, I've got this coming this Monday. Remember I talked about this last week? This is a scarf that I really enjoyed making. And it uses, this is from last week. This is the wheat, the large wheat cable. And as you can tell, it's not a real feminine style scarf. So I, I think this is an excellent uh, pattern for the guys in your life. If you if your guys are like my guys, they're really, really hard to buy for. Don't tell them I said that though, okay? <laughs> Just our secret. But, um, and they're pretty persnickety about their clothes, strange enough. I mean, they, they don't go for a lot of frills or thrills or anything like that. But um, I think this actually might even be something they would wear. So I don't know how your guys are, but um, you know, that you can give this a try. Um, and you can use any worsted weight yarn for this. I, I would, um, I, I prefer sticking to natural fibers. And the yarn that I use actually is not really available in the U.S. But I do suggest a substitute yarn, um, Red Heart Sheep Sheep yarn, which is 100% wool, works really well. But if you find any yarn that's worsted weight at your favorite yarn store. Um, you know, give it a try. You know, anything that you think the colors your guys. Um, and I think this would be a great gift for women too. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, but anyway, I know I'm always getting lots of um, 
you know, correspondence wondering what, what can we do for the guys? Okay, so I um, just wanted to say hi to Laura. Thank you for joining me. I, I do appreciate that. And I, I thank, I'm glad you like that, Kathleen. Um, hi to Caroline. And um, hi to Carla. Nicole from South Africa. Wow, that, that is really cool. Um, you probably know some of my friends over there that work for um, Nurturing Fibers Yarns. If you ever meet any of them, please t tell them hey, because they're, they're really great folks. Um, and hi to Annie. She says, uh... Yes, Annie, yes. A lot of times the cables in these scarves are not as hard as they look. And just to let you know, there's a video that's going to step you through every step of the way. Um, and I'm also going to have patterns for for this on my or in my lovecrafts.com store. So if you're ever looking for a written pattern from me um, that's not in one of my books or leisure arts publications, you just go to lovecrafts.com. And if you just put Bonnie Barker in the search bar, it'll take you right to the store. And as always, look in the video description below. I have lots of links down there for all these things that we're talking about, trying to make that easy on everybody. Um, Kimberly says she's a new crocheter. There's so much she wants to do, but her first project has to be a blanket for her youngest daughter. That's good, Kimberly. I've got a, I've got at least 11 or 10, no, 11 easy beginner blankets right here on my site. So if you just go to the playlist at the top of my channel, if you go to my, the home channel and you hit playlist and, um, you can look through there or you can just type in the search with a little, a little, um, spyglass icon, with a little circle and a stick. Um, just type in, um, easy beginner baby blankets and you'll get at least 11 that will pop up there that you can take a look at. If you need the written patterns, I have all those in my Lovecraft store. And also on Amazon, there's a book with all the patterns together. And, um, that was just so much fun to put together. I'm still working on joining the the PDF Kindle version to the hard copy that still is not available yet. I've got to do some working out with um, with Amazon on that. Um, we hit a couple glitches, but that is coming at some point. So thank you again for your patience. It's It's been a little bit of a busy week here with other more important responsibilities. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But I it is on my plate and I will eventually get to that. Um, let's see, Annie says she made a, a matching hat for, and her husband was amazed and she only started a year ago crocheting. So that, that's great, Annie. I think that's, that's, that's so great. Um, and hi to Teresa from Ireland and, um, and she says she's doing the tulip stitch baby blanket. I hope you like that one. Um, I really enjoyed that stitch a lot. Um, and do I have tutorials on tapestry crochet? Um, Nicole, not yet. I, I'm, I, I guess I, I, I don't have anything like that yet, but I'm sure if you look, you know, in the search bar on YouTube, you could probably find some other channels that do, um, that, that might, you know, help you right now. It might be a while before I get to some projects like that. Um, okay. So I'm going to answer some questions here that were submitted um, in the last couple days, um, some people were talking about, let's see, there were some questions. I'm not going to be able to get to all the questions. There were some questions about a magic circle. Um, rather than just talk about that, I have added that to my list to make a magic circle tutorial for my channel and upload that. So as soon as I can, you know, you'll see that, you know, pop up. And that's another thing. If you haven't subscribed yet, if you could do and if you want to hear notifications from me regularly, just hit that bell. And that way you'll you'll get a notification when I do upload something. Um, but there is also a little community bar across the top of at the channel. And in that community bar, I, I may, might post something once a week or so. And I posted something asking for questions that you all would want answered. And some people were asking about the magic ring. So I will post something in the future. I'm not sure when, but um, there are a lot of other videos on there, a lot of variations on that particular thing. It's really quite interesting, but I will give you my take on it, um, that I want to be able to, to videotape that really well for you and not just kind of, you know, wing it here. And, and I, thanks for your understanding on there. Um, but but um, a Amy 
Amy Sizemore sent in a really excellent question. She says, hi, Bonnie. I'm currently experiencing, uh, I'm I'm not, let's say a medical condition. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it has to do with their hand and carpal tunnel. Um, and her question is, how can crocheters prevent injuries or damage to our hands, ligaments, or any advice on products to use once damage has occurred? I'm currently in physical therapy, unable to crochet at present. Oh, that makes me sad. And have a blessed day. Um, wow, that's really a question probably, as they say, above my pay grade as far as the medicine. Um, but I will say, if, if you crochet a lot, one of the first things you may want to try doing is getting out your cell phone and set a timer and limit yourself to a prescribed amount of time, let's say uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and set a timer. And when that timer goes off, put your work down, get up, walk around, maybe walk around the block or the house or something, or, or just, just get up and walk up around a little bit, go upstairs and get something or you know walk to the other end of the house if you're in Florida without stairs and um, and also it, it, that's going to be good for your eyes too it's going to give your hands a break it's going to give your back and, and, and body a break it's going to be good for your circula circulation and it's going to be up in a project and then you know we try to stand up and everything hurts or, or we, we, we bring our head up and, and you know we realize that oh we have a sore neck all of a sudden I think getting up and moving can work um, at a computer or on a project, I can go two, three hours straight and um, not take break. The other thing I would suggest is your yarn hold. When the way you hold your yarn, um, and and when I see people do a lot of motion with their hands just for one or two stitches, I know something is wrong. Um, so I would I would take a little amount of motion in that hand, and with your with your hook hand, you know, check out some videos online that. That might help you. I do have one. I don't want to say I've, I've got the only one on the market there. I don't. Um, but I have a suggestion for how to hold your yarn that is very hand friendly. Um, it minimizes the motion in your wrist. Um, and also when you do your stitches, you want to try to do what will minimize your movement as much as possible. Um, and I think I learned that from being a flute player. Um, you know, some people when they play the flute, they would fling their fingers up every which way. And, and that's just demonstrates poor technique. What you really want is you want to keep your fingers musically as close to the keys as possible and to minimize that motion. You, you can play better, you can play faster, and, and, and you're saving your hands. So I kind of apply that towards the crochet hook. So try to minimize that. Now, if damage has already occurred, obviously you need to just rest. You need to put it down for a while um, and do other things. Um, People sometimes get braces and things for their hands, but I really am hesitant to suggest specifics on there because if you've already caused some kind of damage, you need to probably see a medical professional or a therapist or somebody that knows um, you know, how to help in the healing process. Um, let me check my comments here. There may be some people who have... Um, okay, I see that some of you are having trouble. It looks like the video might be buffering. If so, I'm sorry. That's probably because I'm working with a lower speed internet here at, at my at my the house where I'm staying. Um, so I apologize for for that. But um, but anyway, I hope that helps on the question. I I know I didn't exhaust that at all. But um, um, as far as causing damage, I will tell a story that I actually hurt myself doing a project years ago. There was a time when finances were a little bit tighter. Um, and and really needed some extra income and I had a project that as soon as I finished it you know I would get payment for that it was for publication and um, it was an Afghan and I finished an Afghan in eight days that's designing crocheting it and shipping it out and um, I don't recommend doing that that's all I'll say from the get-go is after that my arm really really hurt for a while because I just crocheted too much, too fast, uh, in too short a time. So, um, and I didn't get a medal or anything for doing that. And I didn't get paid extra either. I mean, I, I was able to, you know, get the income that we needed. And, you know, it blessed our family in that way. But, um, 
I don't don't recommend doing that. It's it's not a good thing to hurt yourself, and then you can't work later. So do do take care of your body. Um, nobody else is going to. You have to do it yourself. Um, Deborah Wallace asks, "Do you have any advice for left-handed crocheters?" Um, and I, I really don't have any extra advice for left-handers. I'm not a left-hander, but what I do do is provide a flipped image of everything I do. Um, so if you notice when I upload videos, I usually upload two at a time, one's right-handed, one's left-handed, because um, you know, left-handed people are living in a right-handed world. And you and I both know that if you're left-handed, you've gotta be probably twice as smart as the rest of us righties, because you've gotta figure out how to make it work, um, doing the opposite of what the majority of people do. So my hat is off to you. You're the, as they say, medically, you're the only people in your right mind. It has to do with the right hemisphere thing. Anyway, kind of a silly joke, but um, yeah, all I got to say, I, I, I have heard people say that if you, if you're watching somebody right-handed and you're trying to learn, if you look at them, kind of mirror them and just kind of mirror what they're doing. Um, I honestly can't imagine trying to do that. I think that would be hard, but um, again, just, you know, see as, check out left-handed videos um, where you can. And, and that's about all I can really say about that. Um, and yeah, Sarah says, thank you for the left-handed. You are so welcome, my friend. Um, it's a joy for me to do that. And it's actually not that difficult um, to do either. Okay, um, I have another question. This is an interesting question um, for, you know, very basic crochet. It says, I'm still a newbie, but really enjoy crochet. Sometimes if a pattern calls for an H hook, for example, I might use an I hook. But that means a different size hook. I've noticed that I might necessarily have the same amount of stitches as the pattern calls for if I increase my hook size. Is this normal? And she says, I feel like I'm not staying true to the pattern if I don't have the exact number of stitches. Um, could you address hook size and the increase or decrease in the number of stitches one might have? Okay, and then she has another question, but I'm gonna stop there. Um, actually, the hook size should not change your number of stitches that you're crocheting with. That should have no impact on that. So I think if you're a newbie, I appreciate you saying that you are new um, to this. It just may be that you're not using every stitch as you ought to, or the most common mistake, and I think if any of you have well, we've probably all made it. I know I have, and I, I see this every time I teach a group of people to crochet, especially if you're using double crochet for some reason. Um, the, a lot of times people teach that you skip that first space when you double crochet. I don't teach it that way. I like to use every single stitch across. Um, but sometimes people will skip that first space because they can't see it very well. It is a, it's there, but it's so close to the turning chain, it's easy to just skip over that. And if you're skipping over that one, and if you go all the way across the row, and then you do not make up that stitch by crocheting in the turning chain, then you've already decreased your stitch count by one. If you keep doing that, let's say a scarf, your scarf is going to do this. It's going to just become like a cone um, and just, Kind of get real skinny real fast so that's probably what you're doing um it you know if you're having trouble with the stitch count the the uh the hook size will not make a difference now it, it is true you are correct in that saying you are not going to be true to the pattern if you're losing stitches if you're working my patterns and you lose stitches you're going to be in trouble very fast so stitch count is very very important which is why it's a great thing to just stick with some easy beginner videos and patterns for a while, just until you, you learn how to identify where the stitches are and putting them in each stitch. I mean, a lot of us seasoned crocheters um, can do that blindfolded backwards and in our sleep, but when you, as you remember when we were very beginning crocheters, um, your brain is, is doing a lot of things. You're, you're developing muscle memory that doesn't exist in your, in your hands and learning what to look for. It, it's, it's a pretty big deal. Um, I do have some more questions here. And she also had one question. She said, what's the difference between crocheting in a stitch and crocheting in a space? Um, and really, it depends on how the pattern is written. 
A lot of times um, <clears throat> they are one in the same, but sometimes you create spaces in your work by doing a chain and you will need to crochet what they call in the chain space. Um, a lot of times that's what it's referred to um, instead of a stitch. Um, another time, um, sometimes I actually have you crochet in between the stitches. So if you have two stitches and I want you to go in between the post, um, you know, that would be an occasion to say um, in the space, like I might say the space in between the first stitch and the last stitch, which is what I use. I use that terminology when um, crocheting cables and, and I use that space in between where the cables cross on the return row, which is probably sounding like a different language to you all if you've never done some of my cables, but um, but just, just to let you know, just to answer the question, um, which I think is a great question. These are really good questions. Um, something else, a spam call. Sorry about that. Spam call was beeping in on my phone and um, causing me another problem here. Anyway, um, I do have some other excellent questions that I'm just not going to be able to get to today. Um, but I will try to answer them in the community chat. So those of you who I didn't, I didn't get to your questions, um, I will do that um, in writing. Okay. And if you all ever have a question, um, you can always ask that in the, the, um, the questions or the, the uh, contact area of each individual pattern or, or a video. That really helps me if you're asking about a specific video, if you ask it in that discussion area for the video. I'm, I'm very happy. I spend a lot of time during my week doing that. Um, but anyhow, let me, let me, um, let me make sure I've covered everything I have. Let me see. Becky, is there anything that I'm missing here? Anybody I need to respond to? Um, thanks for letting me talk there for a while. I love interacting with, with you all. Um, oh, we have Julie from, from, from England. Thank you for joining us, Julie. Beautiful country, by the way. I, I love, love visiting with you all a few weeks ago. Can't believe it's been going on three weeks since I've been there. Um, yeah, Kay, I'm sorry. Um, I am, she says, is anyone else constantly freezing or buffering? It's probably be my internet that I'm using at my mother-in-law's house. It's just not as robust as what I'm used to at home. Um, and I just did get a spam call, which is gone now. Um, it says, what stitch pattern, I have another question from Holly. What stitch pattern would you suggest for beginner's blanket? Um, well, it really depends on what you like. And, and again, I would suggest you go to my playlist and, and look under the baby, easy beginning baby blankers, baby blanket. Let me try that again. <laughs> easy beginners baby blanket playlist on my channel. And, and that will um, give you some options. And, you know, whichever one that you like the look of, by all means, give it a try. Um, let's see. I want to say hi to Esther. Hi, Esther. Please give Joseph a hug for me and Sarah, too, and your mama. Tell her I'm looking forward to seeing her at some time. I need to get up to New Jersey and, and, and see you guys. Um it says, um, could I, Caroline Gibbs is asking, could I do a video on knitted blankets for wheelchairs? That's a good idea, Caroline. Um, I'll, I can add that to my list. I have a growing list. Um, it'll probably be, I'm not sure when, but I actually have a baby blanket that I'm been, I've been working on. It's just going to be a while before I get that one cranked out. I'm not as fast a knitter as I am a crocheter. Um, let's see. Let's see. Da, 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 da. And Ani wants to know, do I have a pattern, a video on how to read patterns? Um, I do have some old videos on how to do that. I kind of cringe because that was actually before we came into the digital age. So they are kind of old. Um, I do need to address that and I will put that on the list. I definitely will address that at a future time. Um, I'm actually wanting to work on a, on a complete series for for beginners that goes from the beginning to, you know, to some nice projects, um, with lots of, of, um, instruction in doing just that. But I just uh, haven't been able to get to it yet. Uh, I do have one more thing and then I do need to sign off. And, oh, I have two more things. Sorry. 
I have another project coming. Let me show you this. It's a round dishcloth. And these work up really, really fast. And I just used a solid, um, kind of a, a lightly kind of sprinkled ombre. Just your regular yarn that you get from, you know, your Walmart, the 100% cotton uh, dishcloth kind of kind of material. And this will be coming in, uh, in a week from Monday. I'll, I'll make sure I schedule it for about a week from Monday. Um, uh, or two weeks. We'll see. It's coming within a week or two. But this is a really fun project. Works up for um, a seasoned crocheter. You could probably do this in an hour or less. Um, for beginners, probably a few hours. But these make really great quick uh, gifts for people, especially around the holidays. If you, you know, like I like to maybe make them for my neighbors and, you know, people that, um, you know, outside the family. I just want something nice from my home for them and something that's obviously not gonna break the bank or anything. Um, and I've got a big spool of the, the thread from Walmart. It's like eight and a half dollars for almost a pound of the yarn. And um, I think it's 14 ounces now. They've, they're cutting back on everything, but um, I could make probably four or five, I'm guessing, with that spool, and which makes it less than $2 a gift. So um, that's what I'll be doing. And this is what I wanted to get at today. I have two of these from my Teespring store. Let me show you. This is um, just a nice canvas bag. And on the back side are the lyrics to the, the um, song that I have on my channel and we did at the conference this year, sung to the tune of Feliz Navidad. No, it's not knit. No, it's not knit. And on the inside, you have a nice little pocket with a snap that actually works, if you can hear that. Um, a nice kind of a fun bag when you're out crocheting on the park bench somewhere and you know what's gonna happen. Someone's gonna come up to you and say, oh, what are you knitting? And you can say, it's not knit, it's crochet. And you can sing them a little song if you want and embarrass everybody in the, in the, in the room or outside. But um, anyway, I have two of these I want to give away and what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, if, if you want to be in this, I'm going to do this right now. Um, all you need to do is send me an email. And Becky's going to put the email right there in the group chat. It's bonniebay at me.com. Uh, and I'm going to take entries for about a minute or two. And then I'm going to ask Becky to randomly pick a number that corresponds to how many entries that I get. So if there's only five or six of you out there that do this, you have a really good chance to win. Um, I don't even know how many people. Okay, there are approximately 84 people out there watching this live broadcast at the moment. So the odds are pretty good. So I have two of these. Um, and so what I usually do once I pick the winners is I send you an email. It'll come from bonniebayatme.com so you know that it's not from a scammer. And I usually need... Um, don't send me this information now. Wait until I decide who wins. But whoever wins, I, I'll tell you who you are and I'll send you an email and I'll just ask for your mailing address. And for the record, I don't keep this, this information. After I put that mailing address on the envelope and goes in the mail, I don't keep that, okay? If you wanna be on a regular mailing list um, that I send out, oh, I haven't sent one out in a while because life has just been too too overwhelming, but um, I do have a newsletter and you can go to my website at bonniebaycrochet.com and you can put your information in for that newsletter and then I'll have your information, but that's, there's a disclaimer there that so that you understand that you're giving me your information. And just to let you know, I don't, I don't, I don't sell that to other marketing services. I hate that when people do on my list or if I have a special code for a you know, special offer that's just for you, the newsletter, you know, I, I will contact you. And I promise I'm gonna to try to get better about sending those out. It's just that um, um, there's been a lot of family stuff and travel lately, but once, um, once things settle down here just a little bit, I'm gonna be, people are emailing me. Ooh, we've already got, got quite a few, let me see. Let me clear out my spam first, okay. Yeah, and if you just put, yeah, you guys got it. Put bag, giveaway, or something. No, it's not anything like that. 
um, in the in the um, in the subject description is fine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Let's get that out because that's not one. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Okay, 21, 22, 23, 24. I'm trying to give everybody, wow, well, we're getting a lot in here. So let me, let me see how many do we have so far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so far we have 23 people. Um, this is one here too. Let me put a little flag by this one. I'm just taking over here. Okay, Becky, um, pick a number. Be, um, if you could, I want you, Becky, I want you to text me. Um, wait, wait a minute. Okay. Am I back? Okay, am I back? I see, I'm, am I back live now? I know it was buffering again. I'm sorry about that, guys. Okay, I haven't, I haven't said anything about the contest yet. Okay, I'm back. Um, let me see. We have 10, 20, 21, 22. Okay, Becky, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to just put the cut off right now. Um, I want you to... Um, Okay, um, okay. so we. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. I'm, I haven't gotten any emails in about um, 30 seconds here. So, um, Becky, if you would pick a number between, let me double check on the number here to make sure everybody has a chance. That's 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 27. Okay. Two numbers I want you to text me between 1 and 28. So there's only 28 people entered. Okay. Okay, well, hold on a second. Lynn, Lydia is asking, what's the email? BonnieBay at me.com. Hurry up and get it in before Becky. Okay, go ahead. If you want to send me your email, I'll give it about 20 more, uh, 20 more seconds. BonnieBay, B-O-N-N-I-E. There you go. Becky just posted it in the chat there. It's bonniebay at me.com. Okay, I just got one from Diana. So, okay, and I just got another one from Adoring Doll Clothes. That's a cool name. Okay, so I'm going to count again. That's 10, 20, 21, 30. Okay, we have 31 entries, Becky. And I should have said, I really hope, well, I'll make it 32. Hold on a second. Let me do that again. I Thank you guys for being patient with me. 10, 20, 30. Okay, we have 32 now. <laughs> we have 32 entries. Um, so if you could pick between one and Pick two entries between 1 and 32, Becky, and email them. Uh, make that 33. Hold on. Hold on a second, guys. 33, 34. All right. We're going to do the cutoff at 34. No more emails, okay? Between 1 and 34. If you could text that to me. She's thinking. I got the little dot, dot, dot. She's thinking. So as soon as she tells me. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. She picked um, two numbers, and I'm going to pick these in the order that they came in. All right. So let me see. That's oh, cool. Okay. So the first one, the winner is Wanda Wyatt. So Wanda, um, I will, I'm going to flag this. We can do this once we get done with the, um, once we get done with the uh, broadcast here. And the, the next one is going to be, hold on. Mm 
Deborah Mason. So, so, and I think you both looks like you're from, from, um, both of you, I, I hope are from the U S I forgot to say, I hope you guys are from the U S because, um, postage is going to kill me otherwise. <laughs> but, um, I think, I think both, I think I, I actually, actually know Wanda. I think I met you right at the conference. I'm pretty sure. But that's not how I picked your name, just to let you all know. This was totally at random. Becky gave me two numbers, and I picked in the order in which they came in. I'm sorry I can't give one to everybody, but thank you all for participating and making this a lot of fun. So I'll go ahead, and I will, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to email you ladies, and then um, as soon as I get, you, or if you just want to go ahead, well, I'll tell you what, I'll email you, and then um, then you can send me your address, and I'll get these bags. Hopefully, I'll run them out to the mailbox before the mailman gets here today. Well, I got to go. Um, I went way over longer than I intended to. Thanks for sticking with me this long. Um, I love, love, love your questions. Thank you guys for uh, sending those in to the community chat on YouTube page here. So, I, again, look forward to seeing you all next Friday, Lord willing. And I, I'm going to, I think, still be here in South Carolina one more week for being patient for the buffering. I think I just saw myself buffer again. Oh, well. Um, but I just wish you God's blessings on your week and see you next Friday. And don't forget that that men's scarf is coming to the channel on Monday. Bye-bye.